All right, uh, story time. So we're gonna talk about today how I negotiated my raise at my first ever dev job from 60K to 100K within about five months of starting that job. Some quick little context, uh, I did a boot camp in the summer of 2015, no prior programming experience, got hired at this first job about a month out of that boot camp, started at 60K, and then like I just said, within five months negotiated to 100K. Now, uh, that's the story we're gonna talk about today. I have two huge, huge, huge disclaimers, right? The numbers I'm throwing out, like me not being happy with 60K and negotiating to 100K, like I understand that those numbers may mean very different things to different parts of the world and different cities within the US. So keep in mind, these are San Francisco, Silicon Valley prices. And as you may know, cost of living out here is a bit ridiculous. I mean, I, I pay damn near $3,000 a month for rent. So that'll put things into perspective. Second disclaimer is that every situation is going to be unique. This is not meant to be a step-by-step -step playbook on how to get a raise, right? Your company is different, your performance is different. You know, for example, is your company a scrappy little startup that's struggling to get by? Maybe a little harder to ask for a raise. Or if you're a well-funded company or you just raised a big round of funding, maybe now it's a little easier. And also your performance comes into play. We'll talk about all that in a bit. So those are my two disclaimers, but hopefully after hearing this story, you get some insights into how I handled it, what I did, and maybe it'll help you out if slash when you're in that situation. That's my hope anyway. All right, let's get to it. So let's start off with why I even took that 60K, uh, because if you're familiar with the Silicon Valley market, for an engineer, 60K is well below market value, even for, for a junior. So uh, the reason I took that is because like I mentioned, I had no prior programming experience, just came out of a boot camp. I had applied to 60 companies, didn't you know get much response. And then finally somebody was willing to take a chance on me. So my attitude was, I just needed a shot. Just, this was my launching pad. I just needed that first job on the resume. Like I knew I would kill it and I'd be fine. So uh, that's the whole reason I took that less than optimal salary, which kind of put me in this position to begin with uh, to ask for the raise. So the main theme you're gonna see in this video is you need to make it undeniable that you deserve this raise, right? You don't wanna overstep your boundaries of asking for something you may not deserve. So the first thing I did, and I didn't do this with getting a raise in mind, uh, but let me tell you the story about how not only did I get hired for the engineer position, but I also became the designer for the app. Uh, how that happened was my very first week there, I started seeing the app we were getting ready to build and I just was not impressed with it. It did not look good at all. And my motivation for going home that weekend and redesigning the entire app in Sketch, which is what I did, uh, was because I would have been embarrassed to build this and then show like my friends and family, like, look, I'm a developer now, look what I built. And it was like, it would have been embarrassing. So again, first weekend I went home, redesigned the entire app. No, I didn't tell anybody I was doing it. Came back Monday, showed it to my VPS software. He took it to the CEO. They came out and they're like, all right, Sean, we're firing that company, which they were paying a lot of money to, and you're our designer now. And I was like, that really wasn't my idea, but all right, I just wanted to show them like, hey, look, we should hire a better designer because I'm not even a designer and look what I could do in a weekend. Uh, so anyway, how this ties into making it undeniable I deserve that raise is after that first week on the job, I became the designer as well as the engineer. So now I'm doing two jobs for that 60K. I'm a steal, I'm a value, right? So uh, this was made readily apparent because the VPS software within about a month of me working there pulled me aside and says, hey, I just wanna let you know, you're doing an amazing job. Uh, we know you're underpaid, we wanna fix that. Uh, we're raising a series A, it should be done. This is in like December. So the series A should be done in February, early February, uh, we're gonna bump up your pay then. So naturally, I'm thrilled, I'm pumped, I'm happy. I'm like, hell yeah, this is working out great, let's go. But we'll come back to that Series A saga in a minute. But I wanna bring this back to making it undeniable that you deserve this raise. Uh, so another thing I did aside from becoming the designer was I also just took charge and kind of took initiative to lead client side development uh, of this project. And so I was running the sprint planning meetings. I was mapping out what we were going to build in order to hit our deadlines. Just really took like a leadership position. So now at this point, I'm designing the app, I'm planning out the entire sprints, I'm building 90% of the client myself, and I don't wanna take anything away from the other developer that was there. He's working more on lower end firmware stuff, but the client was pretty much mine. So again, back to making it undeniable, like without me, like I'm basically the whole app. So, and I'm getting, again, paid 60K to, to do two jobs. So again, I feel like I made it undeniable. So I didn't feel bad at all when they you know, said, hey, we wanna give you a raise, or later on when I started like really pushing for it. So let's get back to that Series A saga because this happens all the time in startup land, right? You Companies will make so many plans once they raise and they have a plan date like, okay, we're gonna raise X amount by this date. What I've seen in my three startups that I've been at is that date like always gets pushed. So for example, that Series A was supposed to close in February, I was supposed to get my raise in February. 
March, no Series A. April, no Series A. May, no Series A. So I'm working this five months on this 60K salary still when I was promised a bump up, you know, like three months ago. So naturally, I'm getting a little frustrated and I started like looking elsewhere. Uh, so one other key is that I had an offer on the table for 90K uh, from another company because I had just started looking at her frustration. Uh, so another key thing, and I don't want to stress this too much because not everybody can go get another offer. Like that's easier said than done, but that did that didn't help me get the raise. I think it sped up the process because it gave me the leverage to play a little hardball, which you'll see here in a second. So finally, like I said, May rolls around, still no Series A. I have an offer on the table for 90K, which is a considerable bump up from 60, right? And I'm still five months into my entire development career, 90K. I'm happy with that. So I tell my VP of software, like, hey, I'm leaving. I'm leaving at the end of May. I'm basically quitting my job because I have another offer. And in and, and this new VP of software, he knew the entire saga. Like he knew that I was promised a raise. He had been fighting for it. But the answer he kept getting was when we raised the Series A. So finally, when I just said, I wasn't bluffing either. Like I had the offer on the table. I was ready to take it and go. But when I told him I was leaving, he went into a little bit of a panic, uh, which made me feel good. Not good that he was panicking, but like made me feel like they were like, holy shit, we want, we want to keep this guy. So he was like, what do you want? Let me talk. He basically was saying like, what do we need to do to keep you? I don't want to let you go. So having that offer for 90K already on the table, like I felt like I had nothing to lose. So I basically went for double my salary. I was like, I want 120. Uh, I, mean, I was nicer about it, <laughs> but I was like, yeah, 120 is what I'm looking for. Uh, see, let me know what you can do. He's like, all right, let me talk to you know the higher ups. We'll see what we can do. Came back, said, we can't do 120. I mean, that was doubling my salary, 60K to 120. I kind of knew I was asking for a bit much, but uh, you know, I had, I had leverage. I was willing to leave, I had another offer. I felt like I had nothing to lose. So came back, he said, we can't do 120. How about 100? And you know, what are some other perks that aren't financial that you can you know, think about to make up for that other 20? And I never thought of that. And that is one uh, item I want to like, let you guys know. When asking for a raise, there are other things you can negotiate that you know might not be monetary. For example, in this case, I negotiated two work from home days a week uh, with the wink wink that one of those work from home days was gonna be like very low expectations of me. Cause I had started contracting at this point and I was working on other projects. So I had said, I want time to like work on that. So uh, again, keep in mind, there are things to negotiate besides money. So yeah, I thought that was a pretty sweet deal. Again, five months into my career, making 100K with two work from home days a week with one of them being like, again, low expectations. Uh, I was happy with it, so I took it. And to kind of wrap this up, uh, I made it undeniable. I, I did extra duties, went above and beyond uh, with the design, taking a leadership role, basically owning the client. And this is all like three months into my career, which looking back is kind of crazy. Like looking back at that code base, phew, embarrassing. But, uh, you know, so it made it undeniable. Having the offer um, gave me the leverage and kind of the balls to just say, I'm leaving. But I don't think that's what like got me the raise. That's what kind of like made it happen fast. And the Series A ended up closing like two weeks later. So I think I would have got it anyway. But uh, again, that kind of gave me the, the gumption to go ahead and like act on it. And then lastly, I want to stress being patient. So as you know, I was promised a raise in February. I didn't really start acting on like doing something about it until May, three months later. So I was patient and by the time I started like being frustrated, it was very understandable why I was frustrated. Like the VP of software was like on my side. He's like, I know they're kind of screwing you over. They promised you this three months ago. Uh, so that is another thing is I, I kind of made it so all the leverage was on my side. So they almost had like no choice but to give me a raise. Um, that is just one way to go about it. You could be more aggressive and ask for the raise like earlier in the process. But I don't know, the way I am, I don't like to ask for things until like I know I absolutely deserve it. And you know, I've been patient with the people. So that's the way I went about it. Again, hopefully this was helpful. Like I said before, no situation is going to be the same, but I'm hoping you can kind of glean some insights from this story and maybe apply, you know, some version of it if and when you ever go ahead and ask for a raise. All right, see you in the next one.